What's going on guys, it's Michael and GF, and today I'm finally back to do the rest of the new LEGO Minecraft minifigure scale set reviews, and to kick things off once again, I've got the cave, and the set number for this one is 21113, the recommended ages are 8 and up, and it has a piece count of 249, while the price point is 1999, and for 20 bucks, this set is absolutely worth it, I mean, you get a really solid build and three really solid minifigures, and the spider actually has a really nice design, and uh, the, the Steve and Zombie minifigures, they're great, and uh, like I said, the build itself is also pretty solid. So I mean, for 20 bucks, if you don't really plan on going for the rest of this new LEGO Minecraft sets and you plan on just going for the cheaper one, then yeah, go for it. This set is absolutely worth it. And uh, I'll get into all the reasons just as to why, but holy crap, I've got five more LEGO Minecraft reviews ahead of me, or four more after this. But uh, yeah, I'm still pretty excited for it because these sets are still pretty awesome. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and start off with Steve, your standard Minecraft player. I'm not going to be going over him in too much depth throughout the rest of my reviews because literally in the rest of the sets I'm going to be reviewing, he's literally the exact same Steve in every single set. I mean, obviously the Ender Dragon, you had the exception of him, him having the blue legs, uh, but that's because he was in diamond armor. But other than that, the, the rest of the sets is literally the exact same Steve minifigure. So it really is pretty much the exact same Steve from my previous review with the new uh, iron pickaxe or stone pickaxe, whichever you would prefer calling it. It kind of looks like both of sense and you got the purple legs um so once again you've got the new uh minecraft player head which is literally just a square mold with a lego minifigures neck and uh, i mean that's honestly what i would expect coming from a minifigure scale minecraft player i think it's a great mold and i look forward to painting it for future custom minifigures obviously lego cost wise did not want to print onto the sides of the minifigure which is what i would expect the reason was behind that uh because having a pad printer extend all the way past uh the sides it, it may not have been worth it cost wise so they only printed the front and uh, you've got the eyes outlined in black with the nose and mouth also printed on accurately to the game and you've also got a little bit of minimal printing of uh, some exposed skin on his torso and uh, yeah no obviously obviously Steve does have like long sleeves which is something I mean a minor gripe Lego could have done the uh, you know like the molded um, you know like the molded sleeves that they've done been doing a lot actually recently but I mean it still looks okay him having the long sleeves and purple pair of legs because obviously now he's out of the diamond armor on like the previous review and now he's got I mean are, are, I mean is this a stone pickaxe or is this an iron pickaxe I mean he just in, in the set it looks like he just entered the cave so I would assume it's probably a stone pickaxe but regardless it kind of looks like both so I don't really think it matters maybe I'm wrong I don't know but if I am I do apologize and do correct me down in the comments below and uh, this new pickaxe mold I do have to say why is it so long I mean I, I I totally agree with the top I think the top half of it looks fine I do it's just the handle is really really long I mean I, I don't really understand the point of that there's no pickaxe in any rendition of Minecraft that is this long um so I don't understand the reasoning behind that because I really would have loved this pickaxe if the handle wasn't so long and granted that might be because a lot of Lego you know, minifigure tools outside of Minecraft have pretty long handles but Minecraft pickaxes do not so so not exactly sure why they decided to make the handle so big because it really looks kind of strange uh, when you know we look at it because all of us play Minecraft and we all know how long you know the pickaxe's handles are and that is not it so I don't understand what the reasoning was behind that it looks kind of strange and uh, it's kind of unfortunate because this is the pickaxe that we will be getting for the foreseeable future but other than that that is pretty much it for Steve Next up, we've got the zombie, who is essentially exactly the same as Steve, uh, mold-wise, obviously, but uh, printing-wise, it's a little bit different because the torso print is printed in green now, and uh, he's got a pair of green hands and the exact same Minecraft player head, but molded in green because uh, the zombie, obviously, this is honestly exactly what you'd expect from a zombie minifigure, um, and they, 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 the print on the face is pretty good. I mean, it, it's just, it kind of feels incomplete because where's the mouth? I would have liked to see a dark green mouth and have the eyes and nose been printed a little bit higher. I, I just because I mean they have mouths in the game and uh, I mean obviously this version that we see of Steve this is obviously not the uh, default skin that we have today this is more so the classic version that had the mouth and uh, so if they want to do this I, I mean I would have been nice if they carried that over onto the zombie but I mean it still is a really nice zombie and it still really does work it's just that's a minor complaint that really doesn't affect the minifigure too much it's still a zombie and it's still awesome so the spider doesn't exactly take up a lot of the screen. I'll probably go ahead and actually pull him off the base here just to give you a better look at him. And uh, also to fill up the screen a little bit more so the shot isn't underwhelming. Um, but yeah, so here's the Spider-Man. I really like this design. I'm really happy with what the Lego group did with this one. I mean, they probably could have used a tile right there around the neck area. And uh, But I mean, for the most part, though, I really like what the Lego group did here once again. And uh, the legs are really, really nicely posable. They can bend up and down and 
uh, pretty much what you're seeing here is the stopping point, just to give you an idea of how far they go up and down. And uh, then obviously they use this hinge piece down here, which we've all seen before. So uh, at the right angle, they have a pretty decent amount of posability uh, when being bent back and forth. So that is pretty awesome. And then they can rotate because of the handlebar piece used here to attach the legs. You've got a pretty much, a, a, this is a really posable design. I wasn't expecting this from Lego Group. I was expecting something a bit more limited, honestly. So honestly, I mean, this is great. I really do appreciate what the Lego Group did here with this design. And not only uh, that, but I mean, it's accurate. And uh, that's always a plus for me, being the customizer that I am, always trying to make things as accurate as I can on my minifigures. And uh, you can see that this is pretty much the base of the new heads for the spiders, for the pigs, the sheeps, the cows. And uh, so we're going to be seeing this a lot uh, throughout the rest of these new Minecraft set reviews and this new head is uh really really awesome it's uh it's a it's obviously a completely new mold and it's almost basically just a one by one plate with a like a part of a minecraft head molded onto it which is uh pretty awesome it's like a combination of the two things and uh, so it's pretty much like if you took uh the new minecraft player head just like cut out the back chunk and then just uh you know glued a one by one or uh, one by two plate uh, or tile on the uh you know that part so i mean it's an interesting mold and i think it works it's just uh yeah there's really not much else to say other than i really appreciate what the lego group did here with the design work of the spider not only that but this new mold that they're using as a base for a lot of the mobs in these sets so a lot to look forward to with these sets and the printing on the spider's face is really great and i absolutely love not only the use of the different shades of red as accurate to the game but the little textures that they have within the eyes which if you know if you really pay attention to the detail in minecraft you'll notice those those little things and little things like that i think are really awesome i'm really glad the lego group printed those in but it's like they printed that in but they couldn't give the zombie a mouth it's just you know little things like that but uh, design wise i mean this, the rest is just a bunch of plates and bricks essentially but still very effective and overall a greatly designed spider and i really really like what the Lego group did with this one Okay, so now that we got the three minifigures out of the way, we're going to get a better look at the actual cave itself, and uh, pretty much the premise of what the LEGO group is really trying to encourage with these sets is being just allowing these sets to be as customizable as possible and wanting you to customize them as much as possible, and that's why with every single one of these sets, they include alternative instructions and a bunch of dis different inspiration so that you go ahead and take these sets wherever you want, and as a result, all over this set, you have all kinds of detachable blocks. I I mean, almost half of this set can be busted down. All of these ores back here are all uh, detachable. And uh, clearly, like I've mentioned in the previous review, the entire thing is covered in studs. Minecraft doesn't look like that in-game. But I mean, playability-wise, uh, that's one of the things that really people didn't like about the micro worlds. Uh, I mean, people like me, I, I was okay with it because I, I display my sets. But uh, people who want to play with these sets, they couldn't stick their figures on any portion of the micro worlds. But uh, I mean, so it's completely understandable that the Lego group didn't just flat out cover these sets in tiles. Uh, so I just want to make that clear. It's just a little accuracy gripe that uh, is kind of unfortunate and it's something that had to be made, uh, you know, from the transition from uh, actual Minecraft content into Lego. Um, so it's completely understandable for playability and clearly Lego wants you to be able to stick your minifigures wherever you possibly can. And also they want you to be able to uh, customize the blocks that they give you, you know, the detachable blocks as much as you can because there are even studs on these grass blocks, which not only allow for you to, you know, put the grass blocks beneath uh, the ores you're already given in this set, but it also allows you to be able to put the minifigures on top if you want so um right there you have a lot of <laughs> you pretty much have a lot of different uh places as to where you can stick your minifigure which is once again the micro worlds did not have um but yeah so pretty much this is kind of like um like your entry point into a cave essentially like this is like where you first walk in and then you pretty much go from there i mean you don't really see lava on the surface like uh, they are portraying here but uh, i mean that you do want to capture as much as you can uh when, when you when you're given a set this small so it's totally understandable that they still threw lava in there anyway along with a couple of two by two black bricks to uh, represent some obsidian which i think is definitely pretty cool you've got a ladder going on here uh, you have a chest up here which actually has a loaf of bread in it which can be gripped by a minifigure i should mention so i'll just do that real quick and uh, that is how a minifigure grips a loaf of bread because i know uh with the, the lineups that i review lego uh, star wars superheroes you know you don't get a lot of loaves of bread so i figured i'd mention that to those of you who don't usually see those quite often but uh yes yeah, so the lava is really nice portrayed with a bunch of uh different uh, orange bricks a little bit of 
uh, you have a couple of uh, one by one trans orange bricks and a lot of two by two uh, slopes going on there. There are torches in different areas and pretty much the gist of your torch is uh, basically the telescope piece in dark brown along with a transparent, uh, pretty much like a transparent, uh, you know, trans <laughs> words, a transparent uh, one by one orange plate and uh, yellow plate. So uh, yeah, um, now right down here we've got a TNT block, which is super exciting because uh, the TNT block actually has printed bricks and uh, pretty much you have two one by two uh, white bricks that have uh, the TNT texture printed onto it, which is pretty sweet. Obviously not totally accurate to a TNT block, but once again, that is just one of the many, many things that uh, will come with these Minecraft sets in terms of accuracy. Uh, it's kind of basically hard to actually achieve it. And um, yeah, so like I was pretty much the rest of this set, you have a little bit of water right here, and obviously that creates the, uh, those two things colliding, creates the obsidian. I should mention that there is a water bucket. I didn't include it with Steve when I showed him in the minifigure segment of this video, but there is a bucket included with this set, and uh, you get a couple of studs to represent either water, which is what I had going on there, or as I have attached to the corner of this set, just basically for storage purposes, you can uh, pretty much make it into a lava bucket if the damn thing will come off. Um, so yeah, you just put that right in the bucket, and you can have either a lava bucket or a water bucket taken straight out of the game, which is once again a really nice factor that they included with this set, and obviously it makes sense uh, having the obsidian here because uh, you got your water bucket going on. So yeah, now back to what I was saying with uh, the customizable blocks. Basically what you've got going on here, you have all these blocks you see here, any blocks on this set that look like this can be completely detached and customized in whichever way you want. And this is obviously your coal ore. Now, uh, one minor gripe that I think was avoidable that uh, I kind of have to address because honestly, I don't really see a reason as to why LEGO would have done this is uh, you have studs in there. These are studs. You don't actually have any one by one plates in there to represent the coal ore. So you basically have an unnecessary case of not keeping things pixelated where you pretty much could have kept it that way. So honestly, the one problem with the ores, once again, is that they should have used plates in here rather than studs. That's just my personal opinion. Granted, it gives it some texture. I mean, but still, once again, if you're trying to, if we're trying to get as close to we get, you know, as we can to Minecraft here, I don't really think it's necessary to use studs there. Um, it, you know, when you have clearly, you know, you have one by one plates readily available you could, that the designers could have used there. That's one of the minor problems that the ores have, um, but it's just really cool that they're customizable in whichever way uh, that, you know, you want to stack them. And then you have the gold ore right here, which, one, which uh, uses some gold uh, studs for it. And then you also have in the very back here, we can go ahead and uh, break away some of the back uh, to get a look at uh, the redstone ore and uh, this is pretty much uh, locked in by two uh, standard stone blocks and uh, you can see that the redstone ore is uh, using some transparent red studs so uh, really really awesome and pretty much to give you a better look at uh, what is going on in terms of these uh, customizable blocks pretty much you can break away a lot of this wall and uh, I mean pretty much I'll try to pull out whatever I can here and try not to forget the way it goes back in um, but you pretty much saw right there that this is made up of three blocks including the redstone ore and then back here you have even more customizable blocks going on um, and pretty much you have just a bunch of stacks of customizable blocks in here that you can pull out uh, and once again rearrange in whichever way you want and uh, you have another stack of blocks right here this is three stone blocks uh, with a gold ore and I mean it's awesome I mean for customizable uh, purposes and playability purposes I'm glad that the Lego group was able to incorporate this feature so seamlessly uh, because it really works and while granted the uh, blocks don't exactly stay in place if you don't you know maintenance them pretty much like they for example like they'll do this a lot which is not really that great because obviously that's uh, kind of un minecrafty but once again very minor gripe that honestly I probably shouldn't even have mentioned um but yeah so pr trying to put the blocks back in place here you can pretty much like I already said you've got a lot going on here in terms of playability and customization like Lego they really did nail it there and I realized I just kind of misplaced that one stack there so I'll just I'll just leave it the way it is for now um so yeah now the uh what else? I mean, that's pretty much it for the entirety of this set. Uh, you do have some iron ores, I should mention. Um, you have a, you have one iron ore there, and I believe there's another one in this set, or actually, I think that might be the only one, but the iron ore actually uses some tan studs. So uh, right off the bat with this set, you get your definitive mini cave essentially. You get the entry point to the cave, the TNT block that noobs use to blow their way through them, and uh, and you've also got the coal ore, the iron ore, the gold ore, the redstone ore, and you've got uh, the obsidian and the uh, lava and the water colliding and the water bucket that is responsible for the effect, and you've got a ladder going on here, a couple of torches, a chest with some bread in it, 
this is a cave, and I think that that's awesome because uh, Lego Group, they definitely did a pretty good job with this. Granted, it's not exactly, it doesn't exactly have a uh, diamond door, but uh, once again, I think we can all safely assume that this is not exactly your deepest cave and uh, that you wouldn't exactly find uh, diamond ore when you just first walk in uh, to your uh, first cave. So, I mean, other than that, guys, that is pretty much it for uh, the for the, uh, the cave. And obviously, um, I didn't exactly keep the minifigures placed uh, on the set throughout the duration of uh, me talking about it, but uh, they can be pretty much replaced wherever you can uh, the spider obviously is a little bit more hard to place in a set but I mean for the most part this set's great you get this for 20 bucks I think that's awesome so without further ado let's go ahead and uh, we'll get a better look at the box instruction manual and uh, extra pieces and then we'll wrap up this review so this is the smallest set uh, out of the new uh, wave of LEGO Minecraft set. So it does have the smallest box, and uh, on it you have a PNG of uh, the new uh, cave, pretty much uh, with an inconsistent background, but uh, who cares? You can see you've got uh, three boxes displaying the three new minifigures included with this set. Build your own creations, inspiration included, because once again, that is the theme of these sets, and I'll be showing you that in just a second, and how LEGO's really trying to promote uh, customization and, uh, you know, with, you know, pretty much creativity with these sets in, uh, in general. So you can also see we've got uh, the zombie sporting the actual size, reference is pretty much all the features that I just went over and a little graphic down here displaying all the new ores that are included with this set and uh, once again diamonds are kind of missing from this set but once again it's not exactly going to be consistent given that it is just the entry into one cave and not you know the bottom level and you can see we've got a couple action shots as well going on here with uh, the zombie attacking Steve as he escapes in the ladder and Steve creating the obsidian so uh there's the box so my uh, instruction manual got a little bit creased, but uh, yeah, so once again, the, uh, like I mentioned in the beginning of this review, there would be inspiration included at the uh, second half of this instruction manual, but the actual uh, cave itself, the actual set, uh, the, that portion of the instruction manual ends at page 35, and then the rest of the set is pretty much just them instructing you on how to build their alternative version of the set, and uh, you can pretty much do that if you want. I mean, personally, I'm not exactly fond of the second uh, version. That's why I didn't build it, um, and I mean, I'll, I'll give you just a quick glance at uh, what that can look like so pretty much there you go um, that's pretty much your uh, second alternative model it's uh, pretty similar and it's not a, it's just pretty much an extended version essentially you got a bridge in there too but uh, it's pretty cool if you want to build that you got an advertisement for Minecraft itself and then back here you have I mean can we just stop for a second and appreciate I mean that graphic I mean that is freaking gorgeous Whoever freaking photoshopped that, man, good job. That looks awesome. And uh, you can see we've also got uh, pretty much the entirety of the new LEGO Minecraft lineup, which is pretty nice to see in the back of this instruction manual. And also in the back of this instruction manual, you have an advertisement for LEGO.com slash Minecraft. And uh, that's a new page they put up, which looks super fancy, by the way. And then uh, you've also got, uh, the once again, the entirety of the lineup. But this time you got the sets themselves and their respective minifigures and ores. So I'll be reviewing all of these. I already reviewed the Ender Dragon. If you want to check it out, the farm is next. And then I'm going to be going from there with the crafting box and the mine and the first night so stay tuned for all that but uh, without further ado that's pretty much it for the instruction manual and now we can get a better look at the extra pieces the extra pieces are kind of underwhelming there isn't a lot going on here you have an extra handle for the bucket an extra uh, piece for the spider's body and uh, pretty much the entirety of these pieces are all devoted to just uh, the oars and then you have this piece which is uh, in case you lose the top or the bottom half of a torch and uh, then this piece in case you lose the top half and uh, then these two pieces uh, for pretty much the uh, the uh, you know the water bucket that you've got going on there or lava bucket whichever you prefer you've got two studs to decide so not exactly anything too special but uh, still worth addressing and now we're gonna go ahead and finish up this review Alright guys, and there you go, the second of my new LEGO Minecraft minifigure scale set reviews. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to be splitting up the crafting box review into uh, two separate videos because there's no obvious like primary uh, version of that set. So that's going to be split up into four, uh, like four different versions in two videos. So you'll have the first four in the first video and then the and then the second set of uh, four versions of that set in the second video. So yeah, I can explain things, but uh, yeah, I just forgot to mention that because uh, there's going to be more... This is about going to be about six more, five more actually Lego Minecraft uh, reviews after this. So I'm, I say reviews because once again, I'm just kind of considering the crafting boxes like almost like a two-parter. Um, but yeah, 
This said, however, I'm done reviewing, and uh, if you enjoyed this review or found it informative, be sure to let me know by dropping this video a like below and or your opinion down in the comments, as uh, both of which definitely mean a lot and definitely go a long way, because uh, it's always good to hear that you guys are still appreciating the reviews, because uh, there's a lot of them, and uh, pressure's kind of on me to get these done, because uh, as it is, I'm already kind of late to the party, and I kick myself for that, but... Unfortunately, this is as fast as I can get the sets, uh, so yeah, but you can also follow me on the Twitters and Bookface links, both of those are always down in the description below as well, and there I post all kinds of behind the scenes photos and preview photos of upcoming minifigures that I'm working on. Uh, more recently, like I've been mentioning, Black Canary and Arsenal from Arrow Season 3, which is actually going to be wrapping up next week, and that Flash versus Arrow crossover was really awesome, but now I am just going completely off subject. This set for 20 bucks is absolutely worth it. I completely recommend it. Um, I mean, once again, it has those understandable but reasonable flaws that I still like to address in my reviews. I do not hate these sets, uh, which I guess I kind of like made some of you think, um, but that's not the case as I do really support uh, what LEGO has done with these sets as uh, marketing wise, it was genius and uh, they are really enjoyable sets overall. So that's pretty much where I'm going to end this review and uh, I'll catch you in the next video. All right. This is a twenty dollars set, so the box is pretty, pretty. Gosh, damn it! The power within. There you go. The showcase video. Showcase video. Wow, I did a great job, man. I even freaking made my own pieces. I got my own set going. I'm wow. I mean, I am an amazing customizer. This video, or found yourself inspired to. This is not a showcase. There are going to be five new Lego Minecraft minifigure scale set reviews from me. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Eh. And there you go. The uh, review. I keep trying to say showcase. Uh, you can see as I break off the freaking bucket thing there. Oh shit. And uh, once again with the occasional. Never mind. Just never mind. I'm leaving.